It's 2.49 p.m. and I've been working all day, but at the same time, it's one of those days where it feels like I haven't gotten anything done. I've just been on the phone, posting videos, talking about uh, secret company A and then secret company B. Uh, if you didn't know, there's, there's kind of two secret companies going on. One will, will be very soon. You, you guys will know what it, what it is. Um, the other, you might not ever know what it is. It's kind of a secret, secret company. But you know what makes me feel like I've accomplished something in a day? Making a vlog. So that's what we're gonna do now. But first, uh, I have to clean up some... What, why is there, why is the Red Bull in the middle? Yeah. This just is not my day. Uh, I got into like a minute of cleaning and then uh, something shorted in here and half my plugs turned off, internet's off, uh, Red Bull fridge is off. So uh, I hate dealing with this stuff, but uh, We'll get through it. Okay, the office is looking much cleaner, much better. To be fair, I did mostly just move around things so it looks more tidy. All right, we're gonna have to just uh, rely on window window lighting here uh, because the power isn't on still, but that's okay. Yesterday I did a review on the new Sony ZV-1, which is a camera made for vloggers, YouTubers, but like we saw, I feel like it kind of fails at that, mostly just because it's it's too cropped in, it's too zoomed in, and it's just kind of a floating head in different places. And 24 mil is, is the widest it goes, which isn't, it's like right on the cusp of being wide enough, but then with the active uh, image stabilization, it crops in a little bit more, and it just feels a little bit too zoomed in for me. But all last night and today, I've been thinking about what are the actual best vlogging cameras right now? Like if my friend was like, I wanna start vlogging, I wanna start a YouTube channel, what camera, in good conscience, recommend 100% to what are the best vlogging cameras in 2020? That's what I'm gonna try to answer. But first we need to look at what do we actually need in a vlogging camera? Because there's a lot of things that would be nice to have or we want, but we don't actually necessarily need. And to me, what you need is an easy enough camera to use, but still with a high quality image. A flip LCD screen would be really, really nice. It's almost a must for me, but you could get away with not having it. We need a good wide angle frame because a lot of times you're just holding it in your hand and you don't want it to be just a floating head in different places. Good autofocus is a must. And lastly, you need good Good audio. Everything else, like high frame rates and that kind of stuff, is just kind of extra. So first off, let's say you have little to no budget and you want like the easiest camera possible. You don't know anything about filmmaking. You just want it to be super convenient and easy. Well, you don't need one of these. Instead, what you do is you reach into your pocket and you grab your smartphone. When I posted the ZV-1 review, someone commented, the quality coming out looks like a phone camera. And that's the truth. All of the smaller sensor cameras that I've tried, they're, they kind of just look like smartphone footage, except a lot harder to use. And it's another piece of gear that you need to be carrying around. And in some cases, the smartphone just looks better because of all the software advancements they've made, like adding dynamic range and the crazy stabilization they have in things like the iPhone nowadays. Almost every vlog that I've made during quarantine, which is I think like 40 vlogs, I've basically been like daily vlogging during the week. Almost every single video, I'd say at least 80 to 90% includes some iPhone footage. And I bet a lot of people don't even realize. And so often when I post on, on Instagram stories, I'm just using my iPhone 11 Pro and almost every time somebody's asking like, what camera are you using? Why does it look so good? That can't be just your phone. Like, what are you doing to it? This is an incredible tool and there's not one smaller camera, cheaper camera that I would recommend more to a beginner, to someone who's starting out in vlogging than just your smartphone, especially if it has an ultra wide lens. So this is what I recommend for minimalist vlogging. A lot of people also want to start using action cameras as vlogging cameras because they seem really convenient and easy to use, but 
I would probably skip that and instead go a little bit better if you're willing to invest money. Before that, I would just stick to your smartphone. If you are gonna go action camera, I'd probably get something like the Insta360 ONE R just because it's modular, it can be a bunch of different things. And most of the time, I would be using something like that in the 360 mode and then just reframing afterwards. But that's not very conducive for vlogging. So I don't recommend action cameras for vlogging. I just, I don't think the image is that great and your smartphone does it better. Now, if you do want to step it up and spend some money to get a little bit better quality, what I do recommend, I, I think the camera that I, I think I would recommend the Canon RP because it's full frame, so you're gonna get that what nice wide angle. It's got a flip LCD screen. The autofocus is really great. It's easy to use the menus, all of that stuff. And the price is reasonable, so you're not gonna have to sell an arm and a leg to get it. It is one of the most underrated cameras, I think, for vloggers and YouTubers. The only problem is, is that it's kind of hard to get a nice wide angle lens for it because if you want the lens that I think you should be using, which is this one, uh, the 15 to 35, uh, that costs $2,300, which is a lot of money, like a lot of money. And the other options are only 24 millimeters and they're still pretty expensive. But what you can do is buy the adapter so that you can put EF mount lenses on here, which costs about $100. And then you can get something like the Canon EFS uh, 10 to 18 mil, uh, which is $279, not too bad. Or the Canon EF 17 to 40, uh, which is $650. If you're going Canon EF mount lenses, I would probably just buy them used and you're gonna get a pretty good deal on those. And the only other thing that you're gonna need is that good audio, so I'd probably just get something like this, the Rode Micro. It's not too expensive and it's gonna give you nice audio, especially in comparison to the built-in microphones. And if you wanna go hardcore YouTube, like the best of the best, then you get a 1DX, mark. just kidding, this, this would have been my recommendation like a couple of years ago, but no need for this. To me right now, I've probably said this a bunch of times to you guys, the king for something like vlogging in YouTube is this, the Canon EOS R that I'm using right now. It's not crazy expensive, but it's full frame, the autofocus, the flip LCD screen, the high bit rate, so the image is really nice, the C-Log for dynamic range. If none of these make any sense to you, then you're probably not ready for the EOS R yet. There's no extra bells and whistles, it's kind of just bare bones, and that's why a lot of people like to hate on the EOS R, but I think anybody who's tried it for vlogging would agree that it is the best or one of the best vlogging cameras that there is right now. And then the best lens to go along with that is the 15 to 35. It is expensive, but it is the best range, I think, for vlogging, nice and wide, and then you can get a little bit tighter when you need to, or when you wanna get some cool B-roll or anything like that. And if you want the best audio, I would recommend the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. It's gonna give you really nice audio. It turns on when you turn on your camera. Really nice and easy to use, it just works well. But we do have to keep in mind that the new Canon R5 is coming out, which is like the EOS R, except it has all of the fancy bells and whistles. It's got the slow-mo, it's got the 8K, it has all of these things that we never ever thought we could get in a camera. And did you hear the rumor? Uh, I heard on Canon and rumors that the price is gonna be below $4,000 US. That's a lot of money still, but that is way cheaper than I ever imagined. I thought it was gonna be closer to like $10,000 with those specs. Uh, yeah, that's very exciting. So that will probably become the top of the line vlogging camera as good as it gets the future 1DX Mark II, and then uh, the EOS R will be next, and then the RP. I sound like a Canon fanboy, but honestly, Canon is just, uh, maybe by accident, making the best cameras for vlogging right now, in my opinion, except for the good old trusty smartphone. And I hope companies like Sony with their a7S III listen to us more and give us the same great specs that they always do, but then also add on things like a flip LCD screen and give us an even better vlogging camera than Canon is doing. Uh, I am all for the best camera. I have no loyalties, I've signed nothing. I will 100% switch to any company that makes a better camera for me. And 
With that being said, these are just my opinions for vlogging YouTube cameras. These are not the best overall cameras for everything. If we were talking specifically about wedding photography or videography, I would have very different recommendations. If we were talking about corporate videos or cinematic uh, documentaries, I would have very different recommendations. These are what I think are the best vlogging cameras, the best cameras for YouTube right now. Also, Sony, please just Deal with the menus. The menus are not the best. I don't think it's that hard to make them a little bit more simple, a little bit nicer. Maybe, you know, take a peek at what Canon's doing, make it a little bit more clean. Uh, I think that'll help you guys a lot. Okay, I think that's it for me. Uh, I'm gonna try to hopefully get some power in this office again, and I am still on the Peak Design tripod, uh, if you were wondering, so I can do, you know, cool vlogging shots like this. Okay, see you guys. <laughs> And even though the 1DX Mark II may not be the best vlogger camera, it's still a really, really great camera, uh, but I am selling this guy, so um, if you want to buy a 1DX Mark II, I don't know, make me an offer.